Now, there's some things in life that are, that take a lot of our life. And uh, one of them is our heart, of course. You know, you're uh, just the, the very core of your being makes a big difference in your life. Uh, your work, uh, you know, what you do with money is a, a big part of, of your life. Earning it, spending it, so on. And this is another subject that's like that. Uh, our words. Words are a big part of our life. Uh, there's things you can remember people saying that you wish you'd never heard. <laughs> there's other things you're so glad somebody said it to you. Yeah. And what a blessing. Uh, my words must be in harmony with God's words, especially when reproving and restoring a Christian brother. There's a verse in Proverbs 18:21 where he says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Isn't that amazing? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 12, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Someday we're going to give an account of what we've done with Jesus with our words. Uh, we're going to be justified or condemned. The problem is, many times our words are out of harmony with God. Uh, as I went through the book of Proverbs and a few different sources, uh, there was more than we could talk about tonight being out of harmony. But for instance, angry words. Uh, Psalm 64, verse 3. Uh, there's some really interesting word pictures about this subject. Psalm 64, 3 says, Who whet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. He's saying their, their arrows are words. Uh, their weapons are words. And... Uh, Maybe you've done that. Maybe you've received that. Uh, words can really hurt. Psalm 109, verse 3. He says, They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. They compassed me about also with, with words of hatred. You ever heard that old saying, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. It's just not true, is it? <laughs> I, I know the essence of, of what they're, they're saying there, but, you know, words, uh, there's a lot of power in words. They can be used as weapons. They can also be used as, as medicine. If you're in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 2, um, verse 16, not only angry words, here's another way that words are used as a weapon, flattery. Now, this is a particular way, and, uh, it has to do with immorality. Proverbs 2.16 says, To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Trying to, to use words to get you to do something immoral. Uh, you know, the, the Bible warns us that uh, there are those who will use their words to, to mislead us. Uh, there's a verse in Colossians where he says, This I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. He, he's been warning them about false doctrine. Uh, that's the danger sometimes of, of internet preachers and you know, some of these sources where you don't really know what they believe. Uh, they're good speakers. They use enticing words, and, and sometimes they can try and pull you away from a, a scriptural approach to life. Uh, Proverbs 6, 2 talks about hasty words. Probably all of us have had times when we've said something that we wish we could pull back. Proverbs 6, 2 says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Um, Proverbs 29.20 20 uses that actual uh, phrase when he says, Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. <laughs> wow, that's a strong statement. Hasty words. You know, we can, we can let our words get out of tune with God's word. And, and it, it's so important. Uh, words are a big part of our life. Uh, one other that I, I noticed, tattling words. I, I don't know if that's a good way to ID, ID it, but uh, Proverbs 18, verse 8, the Bible calls it a tail-bearer. The words of a tail-bearer are as wounds, and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly. Uh, you know, truth is not the only limit to what we say. Sometimes something can be true and doesn't need to be said. Sometimes we can use the truth to hurt people and, and meaning, meaning to hurt people. Uh, there's a difference when we're using the truth to free people and, and using that to point them to Christ. Uh, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. 
And uh, really, if you want to know a limitation on this, uh, a, a tail bearer, you know, when you know something about somebody, keep the discussion as private as the problem. Keep the discussion as private as the problem. That's a, a pretty good way to, to look at it. One of our memory verses, uh, D, was uh, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame and thine infamy turn not away. <laughs> uh, don't be you're talking about people. Don't be sharing things that don't need to be, to be shared. Uh, Jesus tells us, again, much the same in Matthew 18, verse 15. And again, it, maybe you could turn there. We're going to be looking in Matthew 18. I'm just kind of moving past a bunch of these out of harmony ways to use our words. We don't want to spend a lot of time here. Uh, but we need to be careful that we use our words in a way that's in harmony with God's word. Proverbs 18, verse 15, he says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him and everyone else in the church. Oh, no, that's not in there, is it? <laughs> between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Uh, God puts a limit. Uh, we're going to have problems. Listen, you wouldn't be alive if you didn't have problems uh, with other people. It's just the way life is. And that leads us to the next point. Do we want to be in harmony? Do we want to be in harmony with others and with the Lord's word? I think that's, that's a real key. Sometimes we're using our words out of harmony with God's word because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to hurt them. We want to embarrass them. We want to, you know, whatever. Maybe we need a retune. Well, retuning our words and our relationships, the key for us to be in tune with each other is to be in tune with Christ. You know, you and I could be in tune with each other and both of us be out of tune. <laughs> I've seen that happen. Man, you get people agreeing together and, and doing terrible things. If you get an orchestra, we, we used to, when I was a kid, we used to listen to these records, 101 strings. I assume that meant there's 101 people playing in the orchestra. I don't know. Uh, but you know, for that orchestra to tune, they couldn't just tune to whatever they wanted. They all tuned to the same thing. Usually it's the first violinist or something. He, he plays a note and everybody matches him. Well, for us as Christians, to retune, we need to tune to Christ. If you'll tune to Christ and I'll tune to Christ, we'll be in tune together. We'll be in harmony. Matthew 18, uh, sometimes in our words we have to deal with problems with others. Sometimes it'll happen that you're not the one in the wrong. It'll be the other person. <laughs> and that's not necessarily any easier to deal with than when you're wrong, but... Uh, the Lord tells us what to do. Matthew 18, 15, he says, If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And by the way, that's the purpose, is to gain your brother. It's not just to give him a hard time. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, Tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Now basically, just in a nutshell, he's saying, keep it as private as, as, as you can. And secondly, keep it scriptural. You know, not just uh, approaching this in a, a haphazard manner. Uh, later on in, in Galatians, he says, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. You know, if somebody has a problem, Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. See, that's the point. That's what he said in Matthew there. Uh, thou hast gained thy brother. Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Next time it might be you that's on the, the other side. Uh, a guide I use uh, in this, this particular area is 1 Corinthians 5, uh, verses 9 through 11. You know, not every time somebody does something different than you is it a matter of church discipline <laughs> you know there's there's just some things we can uh, shrug off there's other things we can deal with and, and so on but there are some things where God says you know if your brother or sister in Christ is involved in certain issues uh, if you love them you need to approach them you need to use your words for good um, first Corinthians 5 verse 9 he says I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. 
yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must you needs go out of the world. <laughs> He's saying if you if this applied to everybody in the whole world, you'd have to just sit in a box and never leave. Verse 11, But now I've written unto you not to keep company if any man that's called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner. With such an one, no, not to eat. So there's, I think it's six different things he lists. That if, if you know of a brother or sister, somebody in our church that's involved in something like this, you need to go to them. You know, if you know that they're into fornication or, you know, he, some of those you may not understand. You, you might have to look them up and figure it out. You know, covetousness is being greedy. Um, we had a man some years ago that I had to deal with that was a gambler. I applied this verse. That's covetousness. It was a real odd situation how I found out about it, but I, once I knew, I had to do something about it. And I approached him on a scriptural level. That's covetousness. Or an idolater. Or a railer. That, that's a person who's verbally abusive. You can't have that in a church. Somebody verbally abusing people. Um, a drunkard. We know what that is. Uh, or an extortioner. That's someone who takes what isn't theirs. <laughs> uh, that's mishandling finances. I find that a, a pretty good guide. You know, that's, those are some pretty extreme things. And uh, God's not saying every little, little thing that we have to uh, approach somebody and, and try and, and apply church, apply Matthew 18. But we need to use our words for, for good. Uh, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. This is the verse where he says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now this is probably more to a pastor, uh, somebody in a position of leadership, but it's also to every Christian. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is we need to be ready to use our words for good. Uh, we need to know God's word. Uh, you know, if a situation comes up and, and you're not sure what to say or do, you know what you should do? You should study it. Find out. Proverbs 15, 28, he says, The heart of the righteous studieth the answer. <laughs> now, you may not you know, know the answer right away, uh, but when you see a problem, you know, pray about it, study it. And as well, he says there, be kind about it. You know, the tendency when we're dealing with problems is to be angry and, and even mean. Sometimes that's kind of the norm in, in families and, and societies. Oh, th that's not the Christian norm. And the reason I say that, he says, with all long suffering. Be kind about it, and be accurate about it. Be clear with all doctrine, you know, not just opinion or, or, or ideas. Be ready, be kind, be clear. And, and that's in dealing with when somebody else, you see something and, oh, I better, I better reprove, rebuke, or exhort. <laughs> you know, I, better, I better say something. But sometimes the situation will be that you're in the wrong. Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 21. The Lord gives a real specific example here. Matthew 5, I'll start in verse 21. He says, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. See, here's the specific example. You're coming to worship the Lord, and you remember, Man, I wronged brother so-and-so. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Wow. He's, he's very specific. You know, in, in asking forgiveness, uh, that's probably just as hard as, as approaching someone to deal with a problem they have, dealing with our own problem. And you know, I've found in, in asking forgiveness, one of the things you, that you need to do is to ID the problem. You know, don't just say, oh, listen, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I'm sorry too. Um, you know, don't say, if I was wrong, well, would you please forgive me? <laughs> Uh, what you need to do is identify. Listen, I was wrong in what I said to you. And we're talking about words tonight. 
I was wrong in what I said to you. And then, number two, ask them to forgive you. Will you please forgive me? And one of the things that it does is it makes a transaction. You know, something takes place. It's not just a general thing. It's specific. I was wrong when I said that. Will you please forgive me? The ball's in their court. Then maybe they will, maybe they won't. And uh, one of the, some of the worst things you can do is to make excuses or to apportion blame. Uh, oh, listen, uh, you know, I'm really, really sorry I did that, but boy, I was just having a bad day. <laughs> well, uh, don't, don't bother dealing with it till you're ready to just deal with it. Um, well, you know, I, I, was, I was wrong, but you were too. <laughs> uh, don't bother. You know, identify it, ask forgiveness, leave it at that. Uh, you'll find this. If you've been wrong with somebody and you ask them to forgive you, nine times out of ten they'll say, oh, listen, brother, I was wrong too. You forgive me. You know, usually it'll go both ways. And what you're doing is you're being a spiritual leader there. You which are spiritual, restore such an one in a spirit of meekness. And we need to keep in mind, uh, God holds us accountable. Now, uh, one of the things I need to point out is if you've wronged somebody and you need to pay them back, do that. You know, if you stole their car, bring their car back. You know, uh, don't just say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was wrong to steal your car. Uh, bring it back. Uh, God is going to hold us accountable for our words, for our actions. Uh, I read part of, uh, of this passage, Matthew 12, verse 36. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Our words are very important. We need to have Bible convictions about our words. And if you're human, sometimes you're going to say the wrong words. And then you need to be willing to ask forgiveness. Sometimes you're going to have wrong words spoken to you, and you may need to, to sort that out. But you need to have Bible convictions about it, not just feelings, not just opinions. Let me give you my ABCs of harmony. I just made these up, but they're, I think they're good. Uh, number, uh, number, uh, letter A is attitude. Uh, your heart will make all the difference in being in harmony with others. Uh, you know, the Bible says, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Sometimes you'll say something and it'll surprise you. You'll think, wow, I, ooh, I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> something mean, something nasty, uh, you know, something unkind. Boom, out it comes. You think, wow, that came out of my heart. Uh, attitude makes, it makes a, a big difference. And you, you need to want to be in harmony with others. You, you, you don't want to have the attitude of just being crosswise with people. You need to want to restore. Like he said in Galatians 6, 1, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of, of meekness. Turn with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. I seem to hit this chapter a lot. The ABCs of being in harmony. A is attitude. Uh, the heart, our heart needs to be right before the Lord. Romans 12, verse 16, he says, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. You know, that's a real natural tendency, isn't it? If somebody's mean to us, we're mean back. He said, don't do that. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. Boy, there's a couple of qualifiers there, isn't it? That's interesting. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. You know, the only one you can control in any situation, you should be controlling, is you. Right. You can't control others. And boy, someone can terribly wrong you. You don't have to wrong them back. God can use you for, for good. And sometimes you'll see real blessings. You know, when someone curses you and you reply with a blessing, sometimes God will just strike their heart and you'll have an opportunity to, to be a witness to them. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. What he's saying there is if, if you give into wrath, that's God's place. Get out of God's place there. Let him take care of vengeance and all that kind of stuff. 
Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, what a blessing. Now, not always easy to do, but it comes back to our heart. Uh, attitude. Be his Bible. You know, if we're going to have right words, it's going to have to be based on God's word. Our words being in harmony with God's word. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 the verse that, that you'll know. Study to show thyself approved unto God. That's what we mean by Bible. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, the Bible says we're going to give an account of our words. Well, we need to use our words according to the Bible. Have a conviction about our words. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Let God's word show us the way. And then C is Christ. And the point is this. Our words should reflect the Lord Jesus Christ. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? What can I say and do that would be like Jesus? In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. Read all the way down through the end of the chapter there. 1 John 4, 16. He says, Ye have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. You ever stop and think about that herein? It's talking about the love of God. Herein, in God's love, is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now he gives us an example. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Christ. Christ needs to be our example. And as we, we enjoy and participate and understand the love of God, he says, herein is our love made perfect. 1 Corinthians 16, 14 says, let all your things be done with charity. That means everything. My words must be in harmony with God's word, especially when reproving and restoring a Christian brother. Uh, we need to have convictions from God's word about our words. Uh, God says we'll be held accountable. We can do so much good with words. Uh, we can also do so much harm. You're probably familiar that James talks about that in James chapter 3. James chapter 3 and, and verse 5, he says that the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. <laughs> our tongue's not a very big part of our body, but our words are. Verse 9, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Folks, we need to be uh, considering our words. We need to have convictions about them. It's not right to curse. It's not right to, to use foul language. It's not right to use mean and unkind words. Be kind one to another. Now, that's what we're talking about. Uh, the problem and the solution are pretty much the same. Uh, James 3.14 says, If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, the problem is our heart. And the solution is our heart. <laughs> if you go over to James chapter, chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. See, the, the problem is our heart. Well, the solution is give God your heart. Let, let God take, uh, take care of those things. Uh, let him help you with uh, what you say. Really, our prayer is Psalm 1914. You, you know it. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I'd encourage you to, if you don't already know that verse, uh, memorize it. Now, there's going to be times when you'll say the wrong thing. Listen, get it right. Get it right with God and man. And have that goal 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God can help us to humble our hearts so that we can use our words for good. My words must be in harmony with God's word, especially when reproving and restoring a Christian brother. I thought we'd end by singing uh, from our, our songbook, page 124, Blessed be the tie that binds.